Welcome to lecture 18, to the pre-recording of lecture 18 of uh, Introduction to Supercomputing. So the topic of this lecture is how to program graphics processing units uh, and how to do this from within Python or Julia. So the environment that I will be working in is CUDA, uh, the programming environment from NVIDIA, uh, the Compute Unified Device Architecture. So in the last lecture, I hoped that I explained the origin of this unified, uh, so the graphics card can run in graphics mode, but it also can run in programmers, in general programmers mode, uh, suitable for scientific computing. So the topic of today is the high level uh, environments uh, for using um, GPUs. I'm using Python and Julia as two of the most uh, popular uh, high level and programming languages. So our running example, at least in the first part, and also what actually comes later, is a matrix, a matrix multiplication. So let's start by recapping the most important aspects of uh, the programming model, which heavily relies on data parallelism. So we are running the same instruction on different data. And the key is that every instruction can run independently. So there is this data independence uh, that must be available. So what does this mean in practice that threads are grouped into blocks, uh, they read from memory, execute the same instruction, and then they write to memory. The memory here is the memory of the device. One needs to then always transfer uh, the results back to the host, uh, the CPU. So uh, important also is that we need to run a multiple of the available cores. So a multiple, we have typically thousands of cores, but we need to run 10,000 or 100,000 of threads to make sure that we have sufficient uh, instructions available to make sure that the graphics processing units is fully occupied. So in the lecture of today, we will introduce the programming model. So there is a kernel launch uh, that is running. Uh, so we run blocks of threads. The blocks are organized into a grid. Typically, the number of threads, uh, we can launch blocks of one thread. That's quite possible, but typically, uh, one threads are so the instructions are executed in groups of 32. So the warp schedulers schedule uh, groups of threads of 32. We will see an example of a two dimensional grid of uh, threads. So there is actually a six dimensional. Uh, structure possible. So we have uh, the grids that can be three-dimensional, but then also the blocks can be organized in three-dimensional layers. Um, so threads in the same block execute the same instruction simultaneously. Uh, we, When we described the capabilities of each GPU, then we listed the number of streaming multiprocessor and the number of cores per streaming multiprocessor. So the examples of today, uh, they will assume that the 
compute unified device architecture uh, is available, installed and operational. Uh, this can be downloaded for free from the developer site from NVIDIA. And of course, one must have an NVIDIA GPU um, working. So in later lectures, uh, we may come up uh, with um, more general alternatives or for different uh, types of GPUs. Okay, uh, data parallelism seems to impose uh, a lot of regularity uh, on the type of applications that can run. Fortunately, uh, matrix matrix multiplication is one of the uh, typical applications that is extremely suitable for GPU acceleration. Here is the picture. We are multiplying two matrices A and B. So the A is N by N, N by M. Uh, the B is M by P. And you can see how this works, uh, how this alignment works. So the result, the C matrix, is then N by P. P. And uh, the formula for the matrix matrix multiplication is uh, listed on this slide here. We can compute every element uh, in the matrix C. So the i j element in the matrix C is obtained by going over all the elements in row i of the matrix i. Uh, of the matrix A and multiplying the corresponding element of the matrix B. So the number of columns of A equals the number of rows of the matrix B. So the cost is proportional to the dimensions to the power 3, so assume now that all the dimensions n, m and p are the same uh, as n, then the cost is n to the power 3, but by GPU acceleration this cost can actually be reduced to n. So for the right proper dimensions uh, it may seem as if if the GPU is fully occupied, that you can do a matrix matrix multiplication in linear time, linear in the dimension. So here in this case, all the elements of the product can be computed independently and uh, every thread will do M multiplications and M additions. So linear in the number of columns of A and the number of rows of B. Matrix matrix multiplication is a basic building block in scientific computing. Um, so a lot of uh, operations, I'm thinking now of the blocked householder QR factorization, that reduces everything to matrix matrix multiplication. So many operations in scientific computing rely on numerical linear algebra and they can be successfully accelerated provided we can do this matrix matrix multiplication well and we will see how this can be done so for today for this lecture we do the highest level so we start with python uh, so here is the main reference uh, so Python is a scripting language and one would kind of be a little bit uh, wondering why and how you could possibly do uh, GPU computing from within Python. And also from, um, so there is PyCuda and there is PyOpenCL. Uh, so here is, this is where I'm only going to mention OpenCL. OpenCL is a more general uh, environment. Um, it's unfortunately no longer supported by Apple, so that's why I'm also a little bit uh, de-emphasizing it in this run of the course. But if you have an Intel, uh, Apple, an Intel Mac, then PyOpenCL uh, would work very well for you. 
Um, so here is the idea. Uh, so if you work with uh, GPU computing, you have to uh, write a lot of boilerplate code. Um, so, and that's kind of tedious. Uh, so you quickly have already a lot of code that kind of... Uh, are so the kernels are typically always very small. Uh, small functions that are run by the... Uh, device, but the amount of code that comes around it, uh, so to the point where you get to launching these kernels, can be quite substantive. Uh, certainly also if you have uh, code and also on the host that is used to verify and test uh, the results. So uh, here you see the pipeline. Uh, so it should be possible to stay within the environment of Python. So you can actually uh, write your scripting code. Um, so what uh, the PyCuda does, it takes care of the compilation. Uh, so uh, that's also a topic if you are going to use the compilation compiling, uh, then you have to take care of what is executed, what is compiled for the host, what is compiled on the device. Um, so uh, the what is also hidden, and this is actually not in the benefits, uh, what is also hidden is the entire compilation stage for you. So no make files, uh, no linker statements. Um, Python environment, this takes care for you. Uh, it's also integrated with NumPy. Um, so you that's a benefit if you use NumPy, but also you have to use the same uh, types that are provided by NumPy. So in some sense, you still have to think about uh, the lower level uh, numerical linear algebra. So forget about list processing, for example. Uh, it installs well with pip. Pip install PyCuda will uh, download it from the websites and install, extend your Python installation. So we are running this course on a Pascal machine named after the P100 GPU. It's installed there. Uh, I also have a Windows laptop that uh, runs that has an NVIDIA GPU, and there it works as well. Here you see uh, the checking on the installation with a command uh, prompt, um, so done with Python 3.6. Um, you see you can uh, query the device, so the uh, device that is recognized by PyCuda is this Pascal P100. Okay, so the other alternative was a Windows gaming laptop. And uh, there you see the type of GPU, the name of the GPU that is there. Uh, here I executed it in a Python 3.8. Okay, so we are started. Uh, so this is the installation setup. Uh, pip install by CUDA. Now, what PyCuda will not do for you is actually install the software development kit. Uh, so you, you may have to do this uh, separately. Um, but often when you buy uh, a computer or a laptop uh, with an NVIDIA GPU, it could very well be that uh, this is all very well installed. All right, uh, so our running example is the matrix matrix multiplication. I will go in the order of how to set things up. So this is a toy example. We import uh, the PyCuda. Um, we import NumPy. And for this running example, I will do this for toy dimensions, three, four, and five. So the matrix A is a three by four matrix. The matrix B is a four by five matrix. 
and the result C will be a 3 times 5 matrix. Very inconvenient, uh, 15 numbers, uh, so not even half a warp, but it will work. Uh, so this is just to test the concept. So I will do this with bits. Uh, so the matrices that are generated are random integers. Uh, so you can see the sizes. Uh, so there are NumPy 32-bit integers, N and M. Uh, 3 and 4, uh, M and P, 4 and 5. Uh, so we start off with A and B as random integers, matrices, but then they are converted into 32-bit floats. So we have to allocate uh, memory uh, also for the results. Uh, so the result consists of a 3 by 5 NumPy matrix. So this is the beginning of the uh, Python code, where we import the modules, we declare the and allocate the space on the device. Uh, I'm sorry, on the host. Uh, so uh, perhaps I should have repeated the, uh, the picture from the uh, last lecture. We have the host, uh, the computer, where everything runs. And then we have the device, the GPU. So here we are setting everything up on the host code. Then comes the allocation of the uh, device. Uh, so the program will tell the instructions that have to be executed on the device. So with the memory allocation, we will allocate an A underscore GPU. So that's the mirror to the A. Uh, we have the B underscore GPU, and then we have the C underscore GPU. So we allocate, uh, depending on the size of A and multiplied with the type of A. So on the previous slide, I indicated that we work with 32-bit floats. So the statements that are here are written quite in general. So normally we would need to multiply the size times the number of uh, bytes per item. So the a dot data type dot item size takes care of this. We are still living in the Python world. Um, but the nice thing about this uh, example here is that you can kind of see already the complexity of the Python, of, of, of the GPU coding, the acceleration. So one needs to set up different variable names, uh, different uh, memory spaces, on the host and on the device. And one must do the copy of the H2D host to device, where uh, we read from right to left uh, in the arguments. So the right is the little a, which is the name of the variable, the reference of the NumPy matrix, the NumPy matrix A, on the host and we copy to a underscore gpu which is the name of the or the reference if you like the name of the variable uh, that we will use uh, for the device slide two step number two and now comes step number three we define uh, what needs to be compiled, what will be executed uh, by the device. So here you see the Python syntax. So the source module was imported from the CUDA compiler. And now you see a kind of piece of authentic uh, C code. Uh, I will explain this later. So this is where it gets 
uh, a little bit, and I would say not a little bit. So this is kind of, again, a, this is certainly a culture shock if you come from the Python world. But we will transition gradually in the later lectures more into CUDA C. Um, I will explain this slide. Uh, so I will say that the underscore underscore global underscore underscore is the um, indication that this is a function that will be executed by the device. Um, so in a way, this is already a valid CUDA C code. Um, so this is also how a C programmer would write it. So we have the dimensions N, M, and P. And then we have the matrices A, B, and C represented as one long array. Uh, so this uh, is flattened into the matrices. They are two-dimensional, but they are flattened into one uh, addressing space. So uh, the other thing that you see is that there is one single loop, one for loop. So every kernel, every thread, I'm sorry, every thread will execute one loop. So this is the C definition of the loop that we have seen earlier, the formula on the slide for the matrix matrix multiplication. Uh, you see uh, that the uh, normally if you would define a matrix matrix multiplication you would have a triple loop here you see only one loop this is an indication of the dramatic reduction of the costs so we go from a cost that is cubic in the dimension to something that is linear okay so let's uh, this is hard to understand. I will have some extra slides to explain this, um, but let's continue. So uh, the previous slide was uh, step three, the hardest step. Uh, and now comes the launching of the kernel. Um, so also the compilation is done uh, when at this point uh, when we execute this function. So we pass the parameters the n, the m, the p, and then the names of the uh, space on the device, the a underscore gpu, b underscore gpu, and c underscore gpu. So these are the arguments of the function multiply. And then come the parameters to launch the kernel. So we will launch a block, one single block of n times p threads um, in a two-dimensional grid. So um, we will run one block of 15 threads. And then at the very end, very importantly, we, was, we, we must uh, copy the result from the device to the host. So we have the cura.mem copy underscore device to host, where we read the arguments from right to left. What is on the device is the C underscore GPU, and that gets copied to C. So that is essentially what makes GPU programming also quite hard. Uh, when one programs a CPU, in the loop, one can actually write print statements. This is not possible here. Uh, so it's only after you have executed and after you have done the memory copy that you can see what actually happened to this matrix C. So the last six statements on the slides are the copying, uh, are the printing of the checks. So if everything goes well, so this function is posted or will be posted on the course website. Uh, executing this at the command prompt, uh, I generated random two random matrices of bits. So they are they are represented and stored as 32 bit floats. And you can see that when we multiply the first 
row of A with the first column of B, we essentially get zero. Uh, you can see uh, of the result, uh, the result is three by five, uh, matching the input dimensions. Okay, what did now really take place? Uh, so we executed, uh, we did a GPU acceleration of the matrix matrix multiplication. So let me explain this. Uh, so we were thinking in C, or actually already with NumPy matrices, they are uh, most likely already represented or stored in uh, a row-wise fashion. Uh, so here you see the mapping of the 3 by 5 matrix, as in C, but also as in the matrix C in the example, so the 3 by 5 matrix. Uh, so this is how you would represent a 3 by 5 matrix, so 15 numbers uh, neatly lined up in one dimensional array. Uh, we start counting from zero in Python, both in Python and in C. So this is this linear addressing system where we started with a two-dimensional matrix and we map it to one row of numbers. All right, uh, then uh, we do the same for the mapping of the threads. Uh, so we have this three by five matrix and uh, the block of threads is launched in a two dimensional grid. So we have the thread index. So there's a double thread index. So it's low level C, but actually the index um, so I think I should take an example so if you look at the middle row of the matrix A and then the second column of the matrix B uh, we are computing the element uh, that is on the second row of C and second column of uh, C. Uh, so that means that we will have the element that is indexed by C1, 2. So we have 1 for the middle row of A, so A1, 0, A1, 1, A1, 2, A1, 3. So that's the middle row of a, and the second column of B. So B0, 1, B1, 1, B2, 1, B3, 1. So there we take the thread index Y. Uh, for the first index, we take the thread index X. And to compute the location uh, where it will be stored, we take the P times the thread index of X plus the thread index of Y. So P is 5 in this case. We have NMP. So P is the length of the num length of each row in the result. It also corresponds to the length of each row in the matrix B. So you see that the C1, 2 is at position 7. So 7 equals 5 plus, uh, so P here in this case, uh, the thread index dot X is 1, so C1, comma. So we have uh, IDX is 5 times 1 plus the thread IDX dot Y, which is uh, 2 in this case when we look at the C1, 2. Now you see that I have been saying this all wrong. It's actually not the, the, the second column. It's the column that indexed by 2 of B. So I took the middle column of A and the middle column of B, and that 
and I was focusing on C1,2, which is the element 7, which is kind of the middle element, also in this 15 uh, array uh, of the result. So uh, there is a nice uh, analogy here of the uh, one-dimensional mapping of the result, the linear addressing, and the identification of the thread. So we have 15 threads, we have 15 memory locations. So data parallelism means that you have to align the instructions with the data. So we will get back to this in later lectures. Um, then uh, what is the rest of the code? Uh, so I will try to explain uh, the loop here uh, with the indexing. So it's again good to think about the example, uh, the layout on the previous slide. Uh, we have a 3 by 4 matrix A, a 4 by 5 matrix B. So we launch a block of 3 by 5 threads, so 15 threads. The formula for the IDX is listed here. So the thread with index IDX writes in memory location IDX. Um, then you see uh, the indexing uh, of the in A and in B. Uh, so there is kind of this uh, very awkward index calculation. So with A, uh, we have the index K, and we go over the rows of A. So the matrices are stored row-wise. If K advances from 0 to 1, we shift one memory position in the space of A. We go through the columns of B. So, but B is stored row-wise. So each time when we go to the next element in one column, so we jump a row, we have K times P. So we actually jump uh, uh, P elements in that uh, matrix, in, in that one row that represents the matrix B. So we start at thread idx dot y, which is the second index. And that index here, so there is the uh, second dimension of the block, which is p. So uh, that's the beginning. And then each time we advance uh, with a multiple of p as we go into our array, if we make our inner product. Uh, with um, so we start in A at a one particular row, and that depends on M. Uh, so M uh, times the thread index. Uh, so we, if we are on say the middle row, we actually have to skip uh, the first M elements in A. I hope this starts to make sense. Uh, so we went from the Python world into the C world. Uh, the syntax actually remains very much C. Uh, so, but what the PyCuda does for us, it actually hides the C compiler and also the NVCC compiler that is essentially called when this gets executed, the NVIDIA. A C++ compiler. But we have to think in a data parallel fashion, so there is no way around this uh, in this environment. Okay, so let's now, uh, I'm 35 minutes in, so let me spend a little bit of time uh, with Julia, so the CUDA.jl. Uh, so the main paper is uh, listed here. Uh, so uh, this is essentially recommended reading. 
Uh, so there are not big exercises for this lecture. Essentially that you would take a look at the two main papers, uh, so the PyCuda paper and the CUDA.jl paper. Um, so this is a paper that was written in the time from Julia 0 0.6. Uh, but this is now very well um, worked out. Um, so installation should work straightforward, uh, but uh, point one and four are very important. So first of all, again, it matters that your uh, NVIDIA, that you do have an NVIDIA GPU and that uh, the proper CUDA is installed. Um, so on my Windows laptop, there were some warnings uh, about upgrading to the latest CUDA 12. It had CUDA 11. So, but everything worked. Um, installing is just like any package um, to install. And essentially this uh, suffices. But then with the package manager, there is this test CUDA. So you could actually check. And in some sense, this is very instructive. You can see the ecosystem of all the packages that are installed. Um, so I mentioned uh, matrix matrix multiplication, but if you actually have to do this, there is the CUDA BLAS, and uh, that's the recommended way to do it. Uh, but in this course, we are looking for insight and for understanding. So I hope that the previous example brought a lot of understanding. While you're doing this, be patient. Uh, so it may depend on the speed of your internet, uh, on also the type of graphics card that you have and what is already installed. In the meantime, uh, check out the paper uh, and uh, look at the site. Uh, that uh, describes the uh, ecosystem and the organization of many packages that exist. Um, so I'm doing this uh, pre-recording on um, M1 MacBook, and for that there is uh, metal.jl, uh, which I've installed already and which may be working just as well. And I may come back to this at some point. Here is a picture that I have copied and pasted from the 2019 paper. Um, I'm not actually competent enough to explain everything, except uh, kind of to have the general gist of the um, setup. So Julia is aimed at high performance computing and actually also generates a lot of code. Um, so with the previous <clears throat> with the previous PyCuda, uh, there is the uh, split of the Python script, and then we actually compile C code. <clears throat> what is possible here is that you stay within the Julia framework. It is possible just also to map low-level CUDA C, but you can keep, you can remain in the Julia syntax. Uh, so you have the host and the device and here, but at the device there are also the uh, Julia uh, constructions that are generated. <coughs> okay, so let's do it now. Uh, so I will not do the matrix matrix multiplication in this example. I'm actually here. Uh, the main goal of this lecture is to get somehow to get you started with GPU programming. Um, everything fits here. So this is a complete program that fits on a slide. Um, so I give the URL. So you after the installation, do you can do using CUDA using test. Uh, so what does this kernel do? It is a Julia uh, code that adds to y the vector x. We do this immediately for 1 million numbers. So the, uh, the we have actually device code, uh, the x underscore d uh, will actually store everything on the device 
uh, you see that in some sense this is high level. Um, I don't need to worry about what gets compiled and where it, when it gets compiled, where it gets compiled. Um, I'm also not really need to bother about uh, where it is. Uh, so with the PyCuda environment, we had to worry about variable names that existed on the host, on the device. Here we have to use this CUDA fill, but then on the test, uh, so 1 plus 2 equals 3. So what the test is essentially is doing is checking whether every number in the result is actually 3. So that is it. So in some sense, this is a sanity check on the installation. So I checked, I tested this on our uh, Pascal workstation. I also tested this on my NVIDIA laptop and in both cases test passed uh, was printed out. Um, so on my Windows laptop I had a couple of warnings, not so on the uh, Pascal. So that is it. Uh, so um, Julia has the advantage that you can stay at a very, very high level, uh, but that you can also go down and here in this lecture, we're still not worried about performance. So we still stay at a very high level just to make sure that it works. Okay, so this was my next uh, to last slide after 40 minutes. The main exercise is essentially making sure that you get your hands dirty. Uh, so this is a hands-on course. Uh, please execute. Uh, you can stay within Python. Uh, we actually, with Parkuda, we immediately uh, got very down to earth with C. Uh, we will go to C in the next lectures. Uh, with Cura.jl, we can stay in Julia language. Um, okay, what are the exercises now? Uh, experiment a little bit with the dimensions. Uh, so if you think about it, um, a 1000 by 1000 matrix uh, might be a little bit too hard, but if you take 32 by 32, you actually do have uh, 32 is the warp size. Uh, you may be uh, possible to keep 1024 threads busy. Um, in one block. Uh, so the uh, first exercise is try to see how far you can stretch this 3, 4, 5 example. Does it actually work already for a large example? Uh, Pascal and, and most uh, modern GPUs are capable of 64-bit floating point uh, precision. Try to work that out as well. Uh, for the uh, GPU addition of the two vectors, uh, you can benchmark it, uh, you can do time. It will turn out that it's not so good in the beginning, so there are some, more, some words of caution here, so we may go back also later to that. Uh, but the main point of this uh, lecture is that it gets you started and... Uh, GPU computing can be quite technical and very involved, but one can do this still from a very high level perspective and achieve some very uh, great results. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting.